been so great having Nick's show in the space. Um, it's, you know, three years of work, but I feel like it's this really beautiful declaration of who Nick is as an artist today. The, the sculpture and the drawing and the photography kind of all beautifully pulled together. Um, Jed has been really um, generous in following the work over the last few years and visiting the studio and having lunch and, you know, it's not generous, it's selfish. Well, it's really... <laughs> I mean, come on. You didn't go to an artist studio so what they're working on? Yeah. So, um, we thought it perfect uh, to have him stay a little bit. So, you all know Jed. He's the chief, Nash chief curator at the Nasher. I won't go into a big long... Sure. So, sure. Take it away. Well, and, you know, the other... Oh, quick thing. Oh, sorry, sorry, yeah. sorry, sorry. Yeah, go for it. There's, there are stools here if anyone wants to... So one of the uh, typical things, as you can imagine, about talking about Nick's work in Dallas is everyone knows it. And everyone knows the work really well. So I, I've already got a couple of strikes against me going into this. So feel free to correct me at any point throughout this talk. Because, um, you know, if you don't, Nick probably will. So. <laughs> um, for those of you who have known Nick and his work for a long time, you know you you may uh, recall the things that he is best known for, uh, the photographs that he made, uh, particularly in the in the 1980s and 1990s, the kind of so-called real pictures, uh, which were staged photographs, often looked like film stills, um, in in uh, you know either kind of uh, you know, subtly uh, comical or uh, uh, or um, you know, completely madcap, um, or oftentimes you know, um, uh, you know, with with slightly dark undertones uh, to those photographs. Um, you know, one of the things that I think is surprising when you walk into a show like this is to see all of these objects. Uh, you know, and to see all of this work done by hand. Um, obviously, the sculptures were all made by hand by Nick. The drawings, you know, everything, um, essentially everything in this room is made by hand. And when you think of a photographer that's, that's now turning to, um, you know, making work with his own hands, it may initially seem strange, but Nick has been a hands-on kind of artist from the very beginning. So if you think about those photographs from the 1980s and 90s, and, um, and the photographs even that he made in the early 2000s, you know, all of those required, you know, um, stage sets, costuming, um, you know, props. Uh, you know, in fact, one of the first installations that Nick did was, was it, um, what was that um, space in East Dallas? Uh, one, of, one of Maine quickly to do one yeah. at their, their space, and um, I made uh, life uh, pup, life size puppets that were just a cast of my head, my hands, and my feet, and then we used dowels to position them. So I went from birth to death, yeah. and took you know sort of stage it. And I don't was that 1990 six or something like that. And um, I don't know why, I just gave, you know, they said, would you like to do an installation? And when someone says that, you know, it gives you an opportunity. And at that time, I was, I had, I was burned out on stage photographs and I was starting to want to make motion pictures again and just coming up with something. And so it was, it was a great project. I don't, I wish I had some of those puppets around, but I, you know, I was like, man, no one's ever, I don't want to ever do anything with them. So they're all gone, destroyed, given away or whatever. Um, and that was the first time. And then I finally in 2003, I was asked to do a, an exhibition at Site Santa Fe. And I said, well, I'll make a, a series of photographs again um, for the, for the exhibition. And that's why I started uh, making the, the sort of, we had to do miniature sets because the ideas couldn't be made natural. You couldn't um, have people flying or <laughs> sitting in little trees and this sort of thing. So 
there was a little bit of a computer. Not, nothing in the computer was fabricated, it was just a composite. Like you put the body into a photograph set, which isn't different than you could have done in a dark room, but since the digital was invented, then great. Yeah. So we, we had, it was a much easier process yeah. in a way. But yeah, making the objects, I mean, I built all the, the only thing I never, the only thing I didn't do was makeup. Everything else I, we did, I did. All the props, all the sets, all the paintings in the backgrounds. So this was a natural progression in a way, and I'm, I don't, I want to butt in, because I really no, don't know what no, no, no. to say. But I'll just tell you, um, in Santa Fe, I made a lot of faith. When we moved to Santa Fe in 2004, and I took that opportunity to change as much about my work as I could, because again, I just, photographs weren't doing it for me. I don't know how to explain that, but it just happened. And um, so I took it all back to the beginning. I started making drawings, but I was, Sue Graves is in here, but she's a, the, one of the ex-Dallas uh, curators, did my first, one of my first museum shows in Dallas. And she came to Santa Fe, and I, and I showed her these collages and things I was making. She goes, what are you doing? These are horrible. And, um, <laughs> So she said, really, oh, she said sort of like that, yeah. <laughs> and she and I said, uh, and she got, she goes, why are you doing this? And and I said, because I don't want to make photographs. And she goes, that's what you do. And I'm like, okay, I've heard other artists say this before. And so I stopped working for about three weeks. And all I did is I looked at my a catalog of my retrospective, and I thought, what do I want to give up? If I continue on with these collages, what am I giving up? And I thought playing with light. That's really the most fun about photographs is playing with the light. And so I said, okay, I'm gonna still do drawings, but everything I do will end up in a photograph. So I did a series about drawing. Then I did a series about painting. Then I did a series about light. And then I thought, well, sculpture's next. So I started making little figures. And they were humanoid. Um, human figures, I guess, but they represented an emotional state. Well, then when I had an exhibition of that show, which was called um, In the Absence of Others, there was a lot of emotional and all kinds of crap happening with my, our lives. And um, my uh, dealer asked if I wanted to show my sculptures, which I've never done before, the figures, I guess at that time they were just props. And I went, well, I guess so. I mean, and they were really well received, and you know, artists like that. Oh yeah, <laughs> nice. And so, I, but I enjoyed making them so much. I just continued with that, and so it just was progressed to. Um, I think this is the exhibition where all of it came about: the drawings, the sculpture, everything was made. Actually, some of it to be part of the photographs. And then now it's turning into the sculptures just made as their standalone. Um, and the drawings of the bugs, can't tell you, they just sort of all popped out. So I don't know, I don't remember all the reasons, but yeah. how about him tell it? Well, and there's a, no, and there's a, there seems to be, um, you know, maybe at first glance, it doesn't seem like there's a strong connection between, you know, the work that you were doing, you know, with photography uh, previously in the sculptures now, but you know when you think back to those photographs, there's always an aspect of the surreal about yeah. them, and and you know these the drawings and the sculptures, um, you know are remind me a lot of uh, you know work by uh, you know some of the kind of key surrealist artists like Max Ernst and and Juan Miro and, and Alexander Calder. I mean th those those are the the kind of you know. Uh, Modernist uh, predecessors that keep coming to mind when, when you know, looking at, at these things. I mean, you know, if you can look at the big bug here and and not think of Alexander Calder's, you know, little wire sculptures of animals. It's it, you know, it's Calder owns wire. Calder owns wire. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, but you know, there's something there's something playful and whimsical and and, and kind of. Fantastical about it as well, which also reminds me of Miro. Um, so you know th th that that kind of surreal aspect, which I think was came through in a different way in the, particularly the photographs, the real pictures photographs. Um, you know, is is I think coming out in a much more kind of imaginary and. Um, um, 
the, 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 the objects, the bugs, all this just came out of um, just stream of consciousness drawings. They're all, I just, I made those drawings to be a backdrop for this photograph. <laughs> then I made another set of them to be a backdrop for another photograph. Then I started looking at all the little things that I drew, just sometimes not even paying attention to what was coming out. And I started selecting some to make objects. And I, there's a lot of the, little, the early bug drawings, and so that just so I just sat down for a few days and just <laughs> went to town with some paper and ink on on that those um, shapes, and then I, then I picked some of those to make these larger pieces and the smaller ones, and so everything is most everything in this show is connected to each other in one way or another. You know, did you, I, do, do I remember correctly that you know when you started on these on the, these kind of larger pieces of uh, brown paper, you you were just it started off as doodling while you're on the phone yep. talking to someone. Yep. And some of them happened that way when I got through. Went, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's you know, I don't know. You know, I work all the time. I mean, I, it's all I do. I yeah. Work on my art. So, yeah. um, I, I, first of all, I just love the the paper. You yeah. Because it's right there. It's in a row. You cut it off and start drawing. Um, but yeah, some of, most of them are just, uh, again, a stream of consciousness drawing or things that I saw or I was thinking about. Um, so there's a lot of personal parts to them and then there's just some that are just fantastical, you know, that just pop up. And it's, it, it, one of the wonderful things about having all of this in the same room is you get a sense of how, how all of these things grew organically over time, um, you know, by making the connections between, okay, here's a, this is a series of, of drawings, um, you know, that are, you know, happened over a long period of time that may be related, may not be related. If, if they are related, it's really difficult to kind of figure out, well, what is the relation among all of these things? And then you see them kind of pulled out and they become characters, you know, either writ large, like the bugs, or you know, they, you know, they become, uh, you know, smaller figures, like, you know, these, the four kings <laughs> yeah, over you here. You can see those little guys over there, and also, um, uh, well, I'm, I'm coming to fight it, but, but like this, I just was looking up, I really like this big little face, I have no idea what it was or why it showed up, but then that's why these, the two moons are made. <laughs> this is called two moons, and that's just because it has a, a front and a back. And, um, you know, so, but it, but it grew to be its own self stand, you know, self standing piece basically because I added the pencils. And I did a lot of drawings that had to do with um, a certain number, um, basically, how many seconds are in a day. I did that many lines on a piece of paper, and there's 86,400, by the way. And by doing that, these are the pencils that got to the point where they wouldn't fit in the sharpener anymore. So they were just laying there. And I like using things that are in the studio. I'm not really crazy about going out and going, okay, I need to find a piece of wood that fits this piece. And so I just made use of whatever's in the studio. And um, I'll, I will say the two drawings, <laughs> I, mean, I always raise stuff up occasionally these days in my installations. But these two drawings, they're just drawing here and there what these lines represent a number of 2,190, so there's 2,190 finger marks with powdered graphite and those two. And again, but the figures are in there somewhere, and so the figures came first. Um, but that, you know, that's interesting. So that you've got this kind of organically growing body of work, um, and you know, maybe because I've had the privilege of coming by the studio, you know, on a fairly regular basis, um, and and seeing and seeing it kind of grow organically, um, but also knowing you know that that you know you you're, you're, you work every day, um, you know you live in the studio, and you know it reminds me a little bit of um, uh, you know Bruce Nauman in his early um, videos. <laughs> I'm OCD. <laughs> Just a little. <laughs> And you know, and, and 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 how the videos came out of the concept of his concept of well, what does an artist do, and what is, you know, what, how does an artist make a work? Well, whatever the artist does in the studio constitutes a work of art, whether it's 
the artist walking a line or you know walking in the square so uh, you know all of those those kinds of performative works but you know this this really you know has that same same kind of of, um, of the artist's life lived is his work well that's interesting you mentioned Bruce now but because when I lived in Santa Fe I mean I knew Bruce and, sure. and um, you know what he said is he's got this statement that he goes some you know you go in the studio and sometimes something happens and sometimes it doesn't yeah. and right now when you have an exhibition up and one that took three years to basically put together. I, you know, you, as an artist, you're just kind of like, okay, do I just keep working on what I was doing, which I'm kind of doing, just because I, you know, I will progress into something else. But just for example, um, day before yesterday, I just sat in the studio for two hours and stared at cars going by, yeah. just waiting to go, well, maybe they'll make something happen. <laughs> no, no, you just think like, okay, if I just sit here and, yeah you know, meditate or whatever that, you know, something will come up and sometimes it does and sometimes it doesn't. Yeah. This work all oh, just, boy, it just flew down. The reason that the two bigs are, I have the two big bugs and I do this too. I'm just testing myself. I want to see if I can make them. Right. Well, <laughs> you were talking about, you know, you know, you know, you usually work with the, the kind of paper, yeah, paper, um, clay. paper clay, which is really easily to manipulate and it's really lightweight and it draws by itself. And then you decide you wanted to, you know, make stuff out of wood and and <laughs> and uh, and rebar wire, you know, really yeah, thick basically. gauge wire. Yeah. And, uh, how is it how is it making that transition? Um well it, it's a lot more work. <laughs> um, the thing is though it was interesting. I, I I had to go buy tools, of course, something to cut the wood, something to sand it. Um, stay, just make, make different decisions aesthetically like, you know, staining it or painting it or making it look like the miniature bugs, which that one looks the same no matter how yeah. I've made it. Um, the hardest part was bending these, the, the pipe I found at a, whatever that is, um, was, uh, it's a, a grounding. Oh, a grounding rod. Grounding rod. Yeah. That I saw at Lowe's and it's actually wound in copper. So it's really beautiful, but so it actually was just going to have that copper work, and then one day I looked at it and went, "Man, I'm going to paint it." Um, but it, the bending that was like really, I mean, bending one, I'm like just pouring sweat. It's really tough stuff. Yeah. And one of the little bitty bends over there, I had to go to uh, Jim Sigmund, if you guys know who he is, and just because I needed a miniature. But I actually thought about asking you about your pipe because I didn't want to break it. Because <laughs> he has a big, you know, like an electric one. Yeah, and I thought, yeah, but I, this stuff is so hard that I didn't know, because um, I just bought one of those things that you do this. And I have a 800 pound safe in my studio to put, you know, um, hard drives and stuff in, media safe. So I had to put the this, the, the rod in between the safe and another thing that wouldn't move so that it wouldn't go this way. And yeah. Yeah, it's fun. I mean, it's a nice accomplishment when it's over. Yeah. You know, um, but they're, I don't know, I like that, you know. You know, one of, one of the interesting things is that it's, and I think, I mean, it makes the work so fun is there's so, you know, each one of, each one of the drawings, each one of the sculptures, each one of these figures, has so much personality, and and you know they're they're different personages, um, and you know they so that you know you can and I and and then when they're used in the photography, you know they kind of take on these roles. Yeah, yeah. Um, the, you talk about a little bit about the the role of their you know, yeah the these guys. Um, I did this is a second group. I call them Troop Two. They're called Dream Boats. And um, Aaron's part of how that became because I, I made this is a second set. The first set um, now lives in Florida, I guess. Um, and there was two of them that were really cute, and I called them dream boats. And so then the, all of them became so this is dream boats true too. And um, I don't know. Some I just draw, and then if I just draw something and I go, I want to try and make this. It's made, and so this was a. I mean, I have cats now, so there's a cat. And um, is that a drawing eyes, of your, your eyes? Those are my eyes, yeah. yeah. I have this thing, I don't know what it is. Um, the eyes that are in the drawings are um, mine. I did. I actually did some drawings. I don't have them here. 
that I would um, draw like an artist. Like I draw Picasso's eyes, and then I would do um, uh, 3,000 however many seconds or in an hour and I'm, um, lines. I mean, so it looked like a sea urchin under Picasso's eyes, and so it was like Picasso's eyes in one hour. And then I did Maya, I did Brian Cousy, my sort of favorite artist. Um, who were the other three? And so that, so I just put mine on this little character. Um, and then again, it's just whatever is in the studio, and that's part of that wood pile that I showed you. Right. That I was yeah. About. And so um, I don't know. I don't know where they come from. Some of them just imagine. I don't know. I have. Um, I don't know what. I don't know if I'm hallucinating or what. But sometimes when I close my eyes. I see figures, I can not even tell you. It's like a little slideshow every once in a while, so I have no idea what they are. But I'll draw them really quick. That's while. great. Yeah. Um, let, let's take th that idea uh, and, and come oh, into yeah. the, the There's next some gallery over here. There's more. Um, you know, these end up being, in a way, uh, a kind of record. Uh, not only of, um, you know, the artist's thoughts, but uh, a record of his work on a daily basis in the studio, and um, and and so you know, it, it actually I think I think it ties in quite nicely with a lot of these, uh, you know, a lot of the the. The word sketches that he makes. Um, the um, it's th these are titled. It's not about the words, right? Yes. Right. So uh, you see the big one here, and then there are two smaller ones on the wall in the in the corridor there. Sorry, I picked up a cookie. And then, but the reason they're titled "It's Not About the Words" is because it's about time. Um, it's a way of marking time. It's like you know, making 3,000 however many pencil strokes uh, for the number of seconds in an hour. It's it's marking time. And so yeah, each entry has a day that it, that it started. Actually, you know, we've been talking about time a lot. Everything in here is about time, basically. That's what I've been concerned with for about the last six years. Because of health, a health issue, age, all of that became important to think about time. All the drawings, are, everything that I make now, I date it the day I start it and the day I, I finish it. So it'll have, so there'll be some, and I think that's, I like knowing that from other artists too. Mm -hmm. You know, how long, you know, I don't know why, it doesn't really matter how long something takes, but I like the fact that I'll stick with it. I used to be much less, much more impatient. You know, the photographs, Photographs are immediate, done, finished. The boring part is taking the photograph. The fun part was building the thing. And, you know, painting it and coming up the, um, with the idea, getting the props, all that. And so um, working and drawing in this way, there's a, there's a patience that has to be applied. Um, but yeah, time uh, and dates uh, are, are part of all of these works. There'll always be a beginning date and an ending date. And again, on the wishes drawing, um, every entry has a date that, that was. And I guess if someone ever cares, <laughs> they'll go, oh man, he had a really bad day that day, or a really good day, or he saw something funny, or he saw something bad, and he saw, you know, it's all, it's a pretty personal. Well, and thing. so this big one represents a year and a half. A year and a half. And arthritis. And arthritis. <laughs> well, you know, since we're so, riding this tininess. It is tiny. I, I, yeah. I have to admit, it's really, really small print. Yeah. There's, um, so, you know, would, how long would you write? Would it be I can do more than three lines a day. Yeah. Because they take a long time. But also, if I, if I had to stop, I couldn't really go back and read. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can read it, but... The thought might be gone. You know, I might have been interrupted right. by a phone call or a family member or something. So um, I would just stop it. Sometimes I'd lose my thought, and some of those sentences make no sense at all. <laughs> and I actually apologize on there as well. Like, so I don't, you know, I completely lost my train of thought. It'll never be transcribed. <laughs> so some, actually, 
Um, there's an art, a young artist um, in town, Paul Winker, if you guys know Paul. And somebody found his name on here. And I've started a new drawing um, like this, but it's um, called What I See, or I See, I Saw. Instead of, this is just uh, not about the words, that was like things that I've seen that day or saw or in my mind or whatever. And I wrote Paul Winker's name again because I saw some videos. I go, someone just posted your name on this. I don't know why, but I just wrote your name again on this other one. <laughs> I have no idea. Well, I saw, if you know his work, um, they're basically shapes in a black field with thick paint. And I had these um, rubber bands that were about this long. There was an orange one and a red one. And, I, and they just, I just happened to place them on a black drawing folder. And I'm like, looks like a Paul, I, I saw my, these rubber bands look like a Paul Winker drawing. Anyway. <laughs> so that's the kind of entry some of them are, but I, I think it's funny that. Would you would you do this kind of meditationally or, or like at the same time, that, would you try to do it at the same time every day? No, um, it's just that I have something to put in. A lot of times I have to write them down on my phone or something. Right, right, right. If I'm not at home, that. so I, uh, yeah. you know, I don't forget it like, you know, yesterday we I drove the Golden Triangle from here to Fort Worth to Denton and back to Dallas. Right. You know, I saw Julie Bosey's yeah. um, American Food, you know, with um, Sue and, and Lisa Brown, and you know, so that was an entry. Yeah. Um, I, I expend on it a little bit, you know, yeah. make a little bit of a story so I can take more room with the piece of paper. Yeah, but it's, I mean, it's a really interesting concept. I mean, so it's, it, it ends up being, you know, for an art historian, an, an existential expression, and uh, maybe for—I mean, with, you know, Ankawara made a career out of just noting the date, uh, the day that you know that that's the he, he painting the, uh, the, day, the day that he made it to essentially to proclaim that he existed on that day, that he was actually alive and doing something on that day, um, and. You know, it, this is kind of a it ends up being a record, and I think also of a lot of Annette Lawrence's works deal with time, mm -hmm. and um, and and uh, in recording a span of time, and, and which is a, a way of, of um, considering that uh, you know th that prospect and, and the fact of existence and change. Well, it's Martin dates his from beginning to end as well. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I learned that when you know when he did the talk. Yeah. Um, I didn't realize that, but he dates his things from the day he started to the day he ends it as well. I didn't realize. I think maybe more people do that than you think. I mean, um, I don't know how time becomes part of it, but I guess when you're working as an artist all the time, somehow that's what you really have. Sometimes yeah. too much time, but or not enough. Yeah. Um, but age always plays into that. But everything has to do with how I'm feeling that day. You know, this is all, that's how my work has always been. I think it's just now becoming more evident. Like the sculpture on the far left, my father always like, got mad at me and said, think before you speak. <laughs> <laughs> so that's mouth over mind. <laughs> like, okay, I talked before I thought about what the hell I was gonna say. <laughs> um, and what about the, the drawing on the opposite wall in the white frame? Um, oh yeah, the, that, um, again, I guess it's about time. It's about not my time. It's about Picasso's time. Yeah. That is a blind contour drawing. That's a drawing where you look at the object and you don't look, you know, you don't look at the paper. And that's every piece Picasso made in 1932. The blind contour drawing, which was more work than I don't think anyone could ever make. <clears throat> I mean, it took a few, a long time to do it. It's not boring. <clears throat> And the one, the one on this wall is a blind contour drawing of every one of the bug frames, the, the, um, the ink drawings. So, I, so again, I made, you know, I did the drawing on that wall, then I picked out some of the bugs to make sculptures, then they, they um, influenced making the bug dreams, which those things in the gold frames call, and then again, they exist over here in the blind contour drawing. So that's how everything, and I actually sort of placed all these things in the exhibition so you can see, like here do you see the sculpture, you know, here you see the bug dreams, um, and there's the bugs again, they're everywhere.
<laughs> and I, you know, I don't know why. I, well, they're bugs. I like bugs. <laughs> <laughs> and we're bugged all day long. You know, life's like full of bugs, and especially you know, digitally, we're full of it, it, it's full of bugs. So my life's full of bugs anyway. <laughs> Um, and so, um, hopefully that, that gives you at least a broader sense of, uh, you know, how the work in this exhibition developed, um, also some of the connections that it might have to, to, to Nick's previous work, and, um, and, and also to, I mean, interestingly, you know, even though it's coming from you know, a singular mind that um, nonetheless, you know, we, we we end up seeing ourselves in these various characters and faces in some way or another or can relate to them in some way or another. And the thing that we all can relate to, of course, is the consideration of time. Um, so th those are the things that, that I take from Nick's work. Um, and if you all have Happy to try to answer them, or I'll defer to the artist. <laughs> Can you talk about the larger pieces? The, the twins? Well, um, those are an enlargement of a group of the, the first sculptures I talked about that I made. Um, and they, repre they, they represented an emotional state, which is basically not a really great one, because I made them to point, point towards each other. Sort of, and, and it really was not maybe. It's also sort of political, um, our political state these days. Uh, I think it, I might have made those at a time when you know there was, the country was starting to become more divided, and so it's more of a blame game in a way, or blame thing. And um, they've been positioned many different ways. They were miniature, and they were commissioned to be enlarged. Uh, by Laguna Gloria, the um, sculpture garden at Laguna Gloria and also, they're also contemporary. And um, they're actually made to be part of their permanent collection, but they changed their idea of how they were gonna, they now want rotating sculpture there instead, so they came back. And um, anybody that wants them, they are for sale. <laughs> <laughs> and they're made of? They're actually stainless, they're, they're, they are um, sandblasted stainless steel. And then the reason they're a little darker and richer than what St. Lucia would look like is they've been uh, coated with wax. And that's just to protect them. Um, they were actually right, they were about from, you know, from here to there to the water in Austin. So it also protected them from the humidity and the birds, because it's basically in a forest. And um, yeah, and so they, uh, they, they're they made to be uh, at grade. In other words, their feet to look like they're standing on the ground. And um, they've been in Austin. They're positioned both of them pointing in the same direction, side by side. Um, this is another position in um, where they would actually could be side by side, pointing in different directions or pointing towards each other. I guess what however anybody would feel about them. So I gl I'm glad they're here. I, they're very cool. I didn't really. You know, when you're having your foundry make your stuff, you're really not part of it anymore. <laughs> um, I, I've learned that, you know, I, I make them this big, and then they have to enlarge, they 3D scan them, and they enlarge them, and then they do all sorts, like they coat them with wax and mud. So I just went down there just to put my hands on the thing, because at that point, you're, um, there's some compromises that have to be made, because you're having other sculptures make your big piece try to look like your little piece. Um, the you things. Again? What's that? Comments? Yeah, so okay. so we're we're working with Nick on a on a on a project, and, ah. it's, and it's another um, enlargement. Yeah, and this character is called Big Hands, and it's positioned like this, and the hands are like I don't know ten times what the figure is, and so but I want them to be my hands, and that's the thing that I'm. I don't know how they are going to make it look with all my wrinkles and cracks. And, right, right. You know, yeah, translating it from yeah. life size to yes, you know, because I don't care if yeah. the figure has a little bit of change. Yeah. Uh, but I want the hands to be my hands, so yeah. that's 
Well, I'm heading to learn how Foundry does that. I think they just use a higher grade firm. I'm not really sure. Right, yeah. Um, but I've, I've expressed that to them. So that's, um, yeah, that's what I'm learning about Foundry. It's kind of working like with a photo lab. I never printed my stuff. So you, you know, you make the thing, you give it to a lab, and make a, make a print, and you gotta kind of accept some things are gonna be different than you would do it. You know, so I, I mean, I don't know anybody else working with Foundry that found that's what you have to do. I'm, not, I'm new with the Foundry stuff. <laughs> Either that or, you know, just gotta, do it. Gotta, gotta live down there. And, yeah, or you, you know. make the thing at scale. Yeah. That's the only the way. You make it at scale, and that way it's gonna come out pretty much what you make, I, or I guess. I don't know. When you're going from this to the hands, are gonna be nine and a half feet at the tip of the enlargement. And, the originals like that. And do your hands are attached to a body? Or? Yeah, it's a, yeah. He looks like this. Yeah. Okay. But his hands are really big. Yeah. For a rotation in a sculpture garden, or where would we place? Aren't you glad I asked this question? <laughs> yeah, that's the idea. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I did not. Mm -hmm. We're yeah. close, by yeah, the way. Yeah, we all know. <laughs> We're really, really close, by the way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm done. I'm yeah. <laughs> Thank you all. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.